security threat because it's going to disrupt all these places where there could be droughts or food shortages and you can guess who's going to be there to uh, create the solution here you've got William Cohen saying others are engaging in a type of eco-terrorism where they can alter the climate set off earthquakes volcanoes remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves it's real that's the reason we have to intensify our efforts he said that in 1997 is Secretary of Defense. Sounds Army time, Jim. And the point is, all these military researchers, all these national security people, uh, are able to manipulate the weather. They're spraying God knows what up there. Uh, we know what some of it is. A lot of it's aluminum and, and sulfur uh, dioxide and the rest of it. But they've created this rationale that it's going to solve global warming. Uh, now let's go. That's just their cover. They always denied it until three years ago. Now they go, we were doing it, but it's secret. It's to save the earth. We're, we're peaceniks. We're peace prize winners. Using the internet, like probably many of you all, and I began looking for what the materials were that were being used and why. Now, there's an awful lot of technical material behind what you're seeing. For one thing, these particles, these nanoparticles that are being put into the air, not only help to shield the ground from the sun and block and reflect the sunlight, which can change the temperature of the air mass below that, make it cooler, make it come together and compress. But it can also be bombarded with microwave radiation from the ground. And if you match the frequency of these particles in just the right way, these particles will begin to heat up in the air. That heat is transferred to the surrounding air mass. Now, it only has to be a mild amount of heat. It could be 135 degrees. But if you have countless trillions of these particles suspended in the air that are all being painted with this signal, they will all heat up at the same time, and they will carry that air mass and all the moisture that's in it to a higher altitude where it will condense and become a powerful low-pressure system. Now, people question whether it's possible to manipulate the weather, to steer the jet stream. You have to remember that when you put a coating over a surface and it cools down the air mass below that, the air comes together, it condenses. When you heat up the air mass, it rises and expands. And so by controlling where and when these events occur, you can actually control the flow of the jet stream. A few years ago, it was discovered that the amount of snow that fell in the Himalayas near Mount Everest would actually control where the jet stream went over the course of the following year. And that's just one location on the planet. But if you have thousands upon thousands of planes spraying this material in different regions around the world all at the same time, you can just imagine the amount of chaos that this will throw into the weather system for the entire planet. This ball right here was a red blood cell, something you can't even see without a microscope. Ball. You could line 50 of these particles up next to a single red blood cell. That's how tiny they are. They can be absorbed right through the skin. Of course, there's almost no filtration system that you can wear that will prevent these things from being introduced into your body during respiration. It was an Air Force study, the United States Air Force study, that was conducted between 1993 and 2001. It was called the toxicity of aluminum nanoparticles in rat alveolar macrophages. Sounds real technical, but all it says is aluminum nanoparticles have a toxic effect on the white blood cells, the part of your immune system that exists right in your lungs, in the alveoli, the little air sacs that expand and contract when you breathe. Okay. This is your first line of defense against infection. So if you were able to suppress the activity of the immune system in the lungs, it means that anything else you put into the air, it'll go right into your system without your being able to defend against it. This is why it is so serious. Not just at a toxic level, but as an epidemiological situation in terms of infection. And with this scare that we're having now about Ebola, you can just imagine. You can just imagine what might happen if the wrong material gets sprayed in the air.